And welcome everybody to the Bison Video Blog, brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo. I got a tweet right up your alley to start. Let's Did you do guys it. grab lunch and stake out the airport to see if any flights from <laughs> Wyoming are coming in, or the Fargo That's parking a- lot to see if Tyler Roll showed up in a suit? Good idea. Right? That's, that's a good a, idea. All right. That's a hardcore viewer Laramie? of ours. Yeah, the, a little <laughs> private plane from Laramie. Done that before. We've been there, done that. Welcome, everybody, to our show. So, obviously, the news out there that Bad Ents is moving on. He's going to be taking uh, an assistant defensive coaching job and linebackers coach at the University of Southern California, which will be in the Big Ten Conference next year. We just came from the press conference. We heard from Ents and Matt Larson. We'll get to the Larson part here in a second. Um, Entz was pretty emotional again today about deciding to leave. I mm-hmm. think people have to remember also, Jeff, he was here five years as the defensive coordinator for the last five. Ten years is an eternity in one spot in college football right now. Yeah, and I think he laid it out, his plan on, on what his his deal was, and, and Matt Entz said Matt Entz needs FBS experience. Yeah. That's one of the things that coaches or other schools have taken against him, that he hasn't been at the FBS level, and he, he said that today. Not no real connection to University no, of Southern California. That, yeah. yeah, which was a little interesting. That uh, I think there were some mutual acquaintances. He mentioned Gus Bradley. Yep, word there of was, mouth. There was a little said. vein yep, there, yep. but uh, you got to remember, we see Matt Entz as a head coach now as we're looking at him. He's a really good defensive mind, and obviously highly regarded nationwide on on being a good defensive mind. And I think that. Uh, you talk about USC. Why USC? It's a top five program. He said <laughs> when they're going well. Yeah, I mean it's you, USC. When you think of the absolute blue bloods of the sport, it's Alabama, it's Michigan, it's Oklahoma, it's USC. You could probably get the Ohio State. I'm probably going to get somebody mad that I'm leaving them out, but those are those are the ones. And USC, when they're humming, you look back to Pete Carroll's day. That's the height of what college football is and also I, I think another big factor is usc will be going in the big Ten. correct and so I you're not that too about yeah, the recruiting ties, if it was yeah. just a pac-12 school probably not no. but usc now is big 10 Matt Entz obviously has recruiting ties in the midwest i think that factored in i think uh you look at lincoln riley he goes okay we need guys that can recruit nationwide, and we who, who do we have on our staff who's recruited Chicago, right. who's recruited Illinois, who knows Minneapolis. Iowa, Minneapolis, yeah. yeah, all those places. Those, those are spots. It sounds odd, folks, but that's important now. And the and USC is going to get whoever, but if they don't have a foot in the door and a guy in Iowa, Nebraska, those are guys mm-hmm. you can win with. Well, you're going head to head now with yes. Nebraska, Ohio State, Ohio State, State Michigan, 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 Penn State. State you know, and, and so yeah. now with all the NIL and everything yep. in the landscape, kids can afford to go to USC, yeah. and because their flights will be paid for right. back to Chicago again, anywhere in the Midwest or anywhere in the country for that matter. So I think now with with this Big Ten move, USC is now such more of a nationwide uh, brand, no if doubt. you will. All than right, it, so than it was. I mean, I, right. I mean, it already probably yeah. was, but now to a whole other yeah. level. When you're going to see next year USC play Michigan, USC play Wisconsin, and that's a conference game in October or November. It's just that's the new gist of what college football is going to be. It's amazing, isn't it? Really it? is. It's, it's amazing. Yep. It. And so get used to getting on a plane, yeah. Matt, because you can be doing that a lot. <laughs> Now, I think the big thing, and the, it's the biggest story at Inforum.com is it ends leaving, is who's going to be the next guy. We addressed that with NDSU Athletic Director Matt Larson today. Two things stuck out to me. A, going to move quickly on this. Mm-hmm. B, doesn't necessarily have to be posted, doesn't have to be posted for a while. I guess there's three. I think it's someone with distinct NDSU ties and has, I think, FBS experience and I think knowledge of, of the portal and NIL. Well, I guess uh, that puts Tim Paul yeah, in, that would in be right in the, the top conversation. Of the board, yeah. and, and you look at who's going to take this job. I think you have to look at December 20th signing day, yeah, too. Right. And so you could see a guy, I think, being named here in the next week. I would say the next three or three days, yeah, honestly. This week. And Scott, the job, it was, right thir- after. It was Thursday, yep. and the Bison played Friday in the semifinal, and they had the official press conference next week. I could see that same timetable working out this week, Jeff. Maybe. Especially after what Larson said. And, and we do know that Tim Paulsek yep. uh, interviewed for the job when Matt Ants got it, and apparently that went pretty well, yes. as, as all indications, our own indications. Tyler Roll now, I think, is the top internal candidate. Right. So is it Tyler? Is it Tim Paulsek? I think it's got to be somebody with some sort of connection. And he made that clear, too. Yes. He, you have to know what the Bison program is about. He said he doesn't want a guy to come in 
and just use this as a jumping stone to another job, mm -hmm. that it's got to be somebody who really is bought into the program, knows about the program, knows how to recruit, has Midwest ties. I think that's obviously yep. a, a big deal. Tyler Roll, as everybody knows, is a former Bison football player that was a standout from 2004 to 2008. He's been on the staff pretty much full time since 2014. He became the OC when Matt got Matt got the job in in 2019. He has to be the leading internal candidate. We know Tyler interviewed for the East Tennessee State job uh, in December of 21, two years ago. But this is the only place he's ever been outside of a year. And is that Concordia. a mark against him? Right, and that's the question I was going to yeah. ask you. Is that is that something that Matt Larson could use well, against in this? It's possible. Search? It's certainly possible. Yeah. And if you're comparing the resumes of, of um, you know Tim Polisic right. and, and Tyler Roll, I go back to when Craig Bull was hired because uh, at that time it was down between Craig Bull and Gus Bradley, and Gus Bradley was a former player, uh, Bison assistant coach, big time ties in, in North Dakota from Minnesota, and, and, and he was by far the popular yes. choice. Gene Taylor went against the grain yeah. and hired Craig Bull, and obviously turned out very well. Well, it turned out well for both. Yeah, it worked Gus out Bradley okay. may very well yeah. have done the start of the dynasties too, but he hired a guy with FBS experience. Right. I, let me just end on this. I think we have a decision here, Lou. I don't think it's an... It's a guy like Brent Vegan's name gets getting thrown out there. I don't. I don't. Think I don't so. see him coming back. I don't think it's on Vegs. I yeah. don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't see Brent Vegan coming back. I think Bozeman's home. Yeah. He and his family love Bozeman. They, they love uh, Montana State. His son plays for the for, for Montana State. Yep. His other son is a really good high school quarterback. I think they set up roots. And uh, you know, if, if if he's if he wanted to, I guess he'd be yeah. he'd be. Candidate one A, right? I think he'd be the leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, it'd, honestly, it'd be no brainer, especially yeah. with head coaching experience. Yeah. There, that goes a long way. The guys we just mentioned do not have head coaching experience. Is that a thing to you? The well, guy, Policy and Roll, who we just talked about. Yeah, Chris Kleiman and, and again Matt Larson mentioned this that Chris Kleiman didn't have head coaching experience. Matt Entz didn't have head coaching experience, and obviously it worked out well for both of those guys. So I don't think it's unnecessary. Yeah. But again, if, if Brent Vegan says, "Hey, I want to come back." <laughs> When can you be here, yeah, right? Yeah, That's kind yeah. of the, the answer to that. But you brought up a critical point for people to understand. National Signing Day is next Wednesday. And I asked Entz that, like, is there a plan in place? If if they lose on Saturday, who's fronting this on next Wednesday? Because I'm really, if they if they don't have a... A coach named by that's you know what then, I mean? Like you have to have some plan in place. Then here. you name Tyler Roll interim coach. Or is it for like Nick Gazer is the guy, you know, if it's Goose yeah. who's uh, you know doing signing day, something of that nature if that happens. Now if they win, I think it goes without saying that Entz is gonna probably be handling the well, maybe not. I don't know. What do yeah. you think about that? I don't know. I don't know. That's uh, the that's the thing I don't know about for I national signing day. I don't think you day. can have a departing coach handle signing Probably day. Probably not. Opinion. No, because yeah. this is not his guys anymore. So as we speak, we're just like we're, we're <laughs> problem solving. Yeah, we're, we're problem solving. On the air. They will name a coach before I Saturday. Think, I think that's they have why. to. Yeah. That, I think that yeah. that alone, the the timing of it, and this is we've talked about this for years when the when the early signing period moved and Chris Kleiman told us this you remember he said guys this is going to become the new signing date and it has and it set everything up around it for when you hire a coach when you fire a coach and when you bring in players it's now all dictated by the yep. early signing period and so now. far every player that we know of is is still that it's verbally committed Correct. to NDSU is still coming to NDSU yes. that we know of now on the flip side of that there's the portal and that's also out there, Jeff. Just because nobody's left yet, I mean, Idaho season ended on Saturday night, and their three, their three best players are there today. Yep. So yep. I warn for Bison players or fans out there that are, hey, you know, the portal's been open a week. We're, we're good. I, that's nope. not the case. Nope. I, I caution your optimism on that. But if they hire internally, does that stem the tide of guys leaving? I don't. I don't know. I don't know either. That, that's, that. that's another good question right? too, because you look at the portal and uh, you, you know there's three guys that we know of that have six-figure yes. offers. We think yeah. if they're still there, if the offers are still there, or have they committed or coming back? We don't know yeah. that. We won't know until the Monday after the season ends. <laughs> and that could be whenever that next is. Next Monday, it could be in January eighth in Frisco, Texas. So. 
Just uh, stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about. Is By there, the way, is there a game? There is a football yeah, game yeah. on Saturday. The Bison are going back to Missoula and Washington Grizzly Stadium for a date with the Montana Grizzlies. Bison fans will remember the last time NDSU was there, the season opener in 2015, an epic game that Montana won on the last play of the game, 38 to 35. This Montana team beat Furman on Friday night in the quarterfinals in a game that not necessarily was an offensive showcase. What it was was the Junior Bergen well, showcase. Yeah, you might not want to kick it down the middle yeah. of the field and let Junior Bergen have his pick of the way of where to go. He returned the opening kickoff and he returned this 59 yards for a touchdown. A lot of special teams big plays in the FCS playoffs this year. We got Jaden Price for NDSU returning a yep. punt for a TD. South Dakota State had a block punt for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. Montana though is another good defensive team team like South Dakota was and they have what are they fourth in the country in scoring defense giving up only 15.8 points a game yeah. so you're going to see another team that NDSU is going to have to try to move the ball on and they're going to have to try to do it through the air and then you know obviously get some ground game going there's the this is a different Grizz team than we saw in Fargo last year remember the Bison handled Montana whooped them 49 26 in the second round Clifton McDowell is the biggest reason why Jeff the transfer in a quarterback that's Kind of steady things. Now, granted, he did not have a great game on Friday night, but that's the guy that makes the Grizz offense go. Yeah, you look at Montana and their season, and it's such a slow start. Uh, they <laughs> barely beat this. Ferris yeah. State. They lost to Northern Arizona. They only they only beat uh, Butler. They only beat Butler yeah. by, what was that, 26? Yep. 14 or something like that and that's a team you should be routing 50 to 0 usually and so everybody run Hulk out on a rail everybody yeah. was right not the Grizzlies off in September and, and I think Clifton McDowell was the key they got a new quarterback in and things have changed since then I just going back early on in the season this is how they started the year they've been 35 20 against Butler 43 13 against Utah Tech 17 to 10 over Ferris State Lost to Northern Arizona. I think at the end of September, they were ready to. Yeah. And they only beat Idaho State by eight. Yeah. And they made uh, and a, a really change bad that. Idaho right. State team. So I think they were ready. This is how last year of his contract, too, that his status is still up in the air. I think he's probably secured something well, now with what they've done. Right. In that regard, NDSU and Montana are really taking similar paths. Yeah. NDSU had a slow start, yep. got killed by a UND, and then and I think in the last, what, month, a month and a half, have really started to change yeah. things. On Saturday against South Dakota, where was this team? Right. Playing that, with their hair right, on We did fire. not see that wow. at all. Now, for the first time since 2006, Jeffrey, this is the third straight road game. Now it's 12 weeks in a row. Is this one the legs catch up to you? Does that happen? I think it has to sometime, doesn't uh, at it? At some point, uh, I think that's a, that's a very good, legitimate concern. Mm -hmm. South Dakota State, two years ago on its way, ran into its third state road third straight road game ran out of gas. at Montana State and ran out of gas yep. in the second half. So I guess that's something to look for. That's to me. The only thing on that is for the Jacks, it was three straight plane trips. They The Bison had a bus trip in there. Does that matter? Oh, it's still, you're still on the road, yeah. Dom. You're still on the road. And that's the intriguing part about this because we're expecting 27th. I mean, it's going to be absolutely Wouldn't you rather there. be on a plane for an hour, 15 minutes, rather than four and a half hours on a bus? Oh, yeah, I would think. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, body clocks are weird yeah. and all that. Okay. I'm not a great sports physiologist's mind. I'm just saying that at some point you'd think that would catch up with you. And that may be what happens here on Saturday. I will say this, if they play anything resembling what we saw on Saturday in Vermillion, look out. That was a, that was a, I, I, I tweeted out, I don't remember a, a better first half for the Bison in a long, long time. Uh, probably 2019 is probably the last time. Do you time. think they would still be playing after the UND? No, I did not. No I, way. I had. No I, thought, way. I thought the high ceiling for this team was the quarterfinals. Yep. I really did. No matter if they got some things going, and now here they are with a chance to go back to Frisco. Reminder that we will be live out in Missoula. Bison game day will be there at 10 a.m. Saturday morning to get you started. Jeff, myself, Logan, and Kyle, and of course the game is at 3:30 on. Saturday, that's on ESPN2. The winner off to Frisco, Texas to play the winner of South Dakota State and Albany for the FCS National Championship. We'll have blanket coverage this week of the FCS coaching search regarding Matt Entz and, of course, what's going on with the football game happening on Saturday. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the Bison Video Blog brought to you by Gate City Bank.